In the unknown side of WoW, we look at random bits of unknown trivia in WoW which don't really fit into normal videos. So starting off, we'll go over to Legion and look at a little reference hidden inside of one of the Order Hall campaigns. Located in the Ledgerman Lounge in Legion Dalaran, while you're playing a rogue who's doing the rogue Order Hall missions from Legion, there's a section which will send you to investigate and look for the dead body of Amber Kernan, another uncrowned member who went missing. Once you get to the upstairs room and activate stealth, there will be two SI7 agents named Agent Smith and Agent Jones who will walk around the room and talk about how it's totally crazy that the leader of the SI7 himself told them to kill one of their best agents, which eventually leads the rogue to finding out why this happened and basically the whole story of the rogue order hall campaign. Amber is holding a decoded message which eventually you have to deliver to the uncrowned where you find out that Matthias Shaw has been taken captive and you have to go free him eventually. Now, the two NPCs in this particular part of the quest chain are obvious reference to the two agents in the Men in Black movies, as the real life actors who play the two Men in Black are named Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, hence the names Agent Smith and Jones. And also, during the Shadowlands, you can actually meet Amber and Maldraxxus, and if you're playing a rogue who went through the quest chains, you can actually tell her the message successfully went through to which she'll remark that it's a good thing her last efforts weren't in vain. If you are an alchemist, there is a pattern you can get with a little bit of work which allows you to create a cosmetic head item that places a red candle on top of your head, called the Red Noggin Candle. In order to obtain the pattern, what you need to do is collect 10 infused rubies, which drop from random NPCs around the zone of Revendreth or from Venthyr reputation boxes. Then you need some atonement crypt keys so that you can open up some of the crypts in this location on the map where the bored dredger NPC has a chance to spawn every time you open up one of the crypts. It's RNG how long it will actually take to find the NPC you need, but if you have 20 extra infused rubies, you can head over to this waypoint on the map, where there's a bell that you can ring, which increases the drop rate of atonement keys for 20 minutes. Then, once the NPC spawns, you have about 30 seconds to buy the pattern you want, as eventually he'll just run off. So you have to be quick and make sure you have the required amount of rubies and empty backspace to actually purchase the item. It is a pretty unique transmog though, and I was able to get the NPC to spawn after opening only a single crypt. Although I probably just got lucky, as I saw a lot of reports of people taking at least a few hours to get the NPC to spawn. And in today's segment of Lore Reader Tales, we will be going over Leonid Bartholomew, an undead warrior who plays a role in a whole bunch of different expansions, even if only a pretty minor one. Before his undead state, Leonid used to be a paladin before he was later killed and resurrected by the Lich King into a mindless undead. He was later freed by the Banshee Queen, but is loyal to the Argent Dawn. Leonid sees being an undead as a mere malady, or an illness which merely requires a treatment in order to cure. He doesn't see it as much of a curse that they're forced to live with as all the others, and thinks that one day he'll probably find a way to just make it better. During Vanilla WoW, he appears in the Light Hopes Chapel in the Eastern Plainlands and will send adventurers of both the Alliance and Horde to kill Ras Frostwhisper, who is the Lich located in Skolomance. In Wrath of the Lich King, Leonid appears during the attack in the Light Hopes Chapel in the Death Knight starting zone, right before the arrival of Tyrion Fordrin. In the Cataclysm, with the revamp of the zones in the Argent Crusade and a whole bunch of new quests, Leonid will send adventurers to help out with the Brotherhood of the Light, which is a splinter group of the Argent Crusade who are kind of like a less extreme version of the Scarlet Crusade. They don't like the rules and regulations of the Argent Dawn, but they still want to fight the dark forces of the world. And in Warlords of Draenor, Leonid appears in the Lunar Fall Inn in the Frostwall Tavern for Horde and Alliance players, and will ask adventurers to go into Auchendoom in order to find the Soulweave vessels, which he believes can help aid in the Argent Dawn investigation into the world of the transition from life to death. And he thinks it's key in discovering the truth behind the bridge between both worlds, and perhaps a reason why the Scourge do not fully make that transition. So, he's still on the lookout for a cure as late as World of the Draenor, although as of making this video, he still hasn't really shown up again. Leonid Bartholomew is notable for being one of the few good aligned undead in the world, and whenever lore aficionados like to bring up good factions of undead, Bartholomew would usually come up in that conversation as a possible leader of this good aligned undead faction. That and Lillian Voss, and after the events of BFA, we know which one of these two Blizzard eventually went with. Well, until Kalia takes over more officially anyway. And now some information about the earliest versions of the game. Did you know the earliest design of druids was for them to constantly switch forms during battle? 
They wanted them to be in bear form if they were taking damage, going into kitty form to deal more damage, and going to caster form in order to use their mana from range, while also giving their innervate to the healers. So they had a lot of talents and abilities that synergized with them swapping forms, and even the capstone talent for the feral tree was a mana reduction to their shapeshifting. But there were a few problems with this design. The biggest was that shapeshifting cost so much mana that it literally disincentivized players from wanting to shapeshift during battle at all. The capstone ability for Feral Druids was supposed to offset this, but even with a 25% mana reduction, it was still too expensive to constantly swap forms. And they didn't really pull competitive damage doing it anyway. You're best off just sticking to one form and not swapping during battle. It wasn't really until later on in WoW that they finally got this intended design philosophy down. Or at least in PvP. In PvP, Druids shapeshift to different forms all the time, and they've been doing that for many years. But in PvE, they finally got Druids to shapeshift mid-battle with one of their talents called Affinity. Druids have four specs, and they're able to pick one of their affinities that gives them traits and features from one of the other four specs. So, a Resto Druid who takes Feral Affinity, for example, is much more effective when they're in cat form, and is actually a completely viable option to take when running Mythic Plus dungeons, as Druids are able to pull some of the highest healer damage by just going into cat form. Now, whether druids want to constantly swap forms all the time in a raid, though, is another issue. But outside of raiding environments, there's lots of incentives for druids to shapeshift constantly that wasn't there in vanilla WoW at all. So it seems they kept this design philosophy throughout the years, and didn't really nail it into much later on in WoW's lifetime. And now, for a piece of WoW history. According to a leaked alpha build of WoW, which came out a year before vanilla WoW, when you created a new undead character, you'd actually get a letter in your inventory. The letter would basically just give you a very quick rundown of your situation depending on what class you were, and then tell you if you want to grow stronger to just visit your class trainer of choice. So every class would get a different letter. The note for the warrior basically just told you who your enemies were, i.e. humans in the Scarlet Crusade, and who you'd have to fight. The letter for the mage explained more about what happened to your character and how they were raised as an undead and what they should expect from their new life, before directing them to a mage trainer. The Warlock note would basically just tell you to burn everything, while giving you some light guidance to maybe use your burning powers on the Burning Legion and not the Horde. Having a note in your inventory which explains your character's new undead status seems like an excellent piece of flavorful lore which might better explain why you're playing a random zombie, especially if you're not familiar with the Warcraft universe, or just want to be more immersed in your character. The letters were removed from all starting undead bags by beta, and were definitely not in the vanilla version of the game. Instead, all undeads were basically given the same intro experience, where they're told to go kill some mindless ghouls or something. Located in the Shadowpan Monastery is a secret area, where there's a shrine that gives you a buff called the Unseen Force. In order to get to this area, you have to go out of your way off the map in the dungeon, and then getting up to the location that doesn't seem possible in game without using some kind of wall climbing tool. I was only able to get to this location thanks to the Venthyr Teleport, and it's kind of a surprise it's so hard to get to, considering the buff it gives you is incredibly helpful for completing the achievement in the dungeon. You see, when you click on the buff, it gives you an increased 90% chance to hit for 15 minutes, and in order to get the achievement from the last boss, you have to defeat him while you have a whole bunch of the debuffs on you which reduce your chance to hit. And it can be easily surmised that you're supposed to come over here in order to get this buff in order to complete that achievement. But it's not in an obvious location, and it's kind of hard to get to. It's also surrounded by a whole bunch of tombstones and two stealth NPCs who are only visible when you get close to them. If you talk to either of them, they only tell you one line of dialogue about honoring their family and nothing else. So it seems to be a neat little hidden place, which I don't think they probably meant to make it as hidden as it ended up being, considering the useful buff it provides. But this is a place that I'm sure very few people have known about or even been to and definitely fits the whole hidden place in World of Warcraft vibe, which is perfect for this video.